Welcome to a new week with the electric trucker. This week, I'm transporting goods for new clients who specifically hired us for an electric delivery. And I'm visiting a small garden center that proves even small businesses can go electric. I'm currently charging my Evoco and have a loading appointment at 8.30, and then I'll be heading across Germany. I'm loaded with 20 tons, and the trailer is fully packed with 64 pallets all the way to the back. And I'm now doing a validation run. It's for a potential new client who wants to see if the route works just as well with an electric truck as it does with diesel. If it goes well, they'll switch from their diesel logistics provider to us to go electric. If in a few years logistics companies start complaining about losing clients while still relying on diesel, they really shouldn't be surprised. They simply didn't keep up with the transition. Clients are paying attention to CO2 emissions and the overall environmental impact. And logistics is the first lever they can pull by hiring a provider who offers CO2 neutral deliveries. When I'm driving a route for the first time or validating it, I play it safe and go for proper truck charging parks since they're also easier to recommend to my colleagues if they end up driving the route. That's why I'm in Neudrossenfeld right now. They've got two chargers in the truck parking area, separate from the car chargers. They deliver full power and work flawlessly. And now a quick update on my Ionic. After the issues at the Hockenheim ring, the car was running again. But on my way home last week, I noticed a vibration in the drivetrain. I still made it home, but then the same error message from before popped up again. I swapped the battery, but the issue came back. So it wasn't the battery after all. Now the car is back in the shop. The good thing is, the error is now reproducible, which should make it easier to track down and fix. But for now, I'm on the road without my car and without my dog. I'm just rolling out of the warehouse. I got in right away and the forklift had long forks and could unload two pallets at once. Everything went super quickly and the tour was a perfect fit. Let's hope the client thinks the same. I arrived with just seven minutes of driving time left and tomorrow I've got another tour lined up, this time with hazardous materials heading back north. Now that I'm certified to transport hazmat, these jobs are much more valuable. My employer paid for the training and it really pays off makes you instantly more valuable and you can earn more with the truck. And this charging park is awesome. There's a Lidl, Aldi, McDonald's, Subway, Burger King, all in one place. For a trucker, that's the dream. Being able to shop and eat while the truck charges is just perfect. <laughs> I also changed how I document moving the truck after charging. I do it the same way as when taking a ferry. You're allowed to move the truck up to an hour before or after the ferry ride, as long as you immediately continue your rest period afterwards because having to sit and block a charging station for nine hours just because you're not allowed to move the truck after charging is totally unrealistic. I'm keeping a detailed record of everything, photos, logs, so if there's ever a check and they ask why I'm on the ferry so often, I'll show them my documentation and hope they understand. And if not, it's on me. This is the kind of pioneer work you have to do when driving electric. I've been on the road since six in the morning and just now the Audi in front of me pulled a really risky move. They overtook on a blind spot and then an oncoming car appeared. I had to brake hard and move right and the oncoming driver had to brake too. At the next traffic light, the Audi driver apologized. Every driver makes mistakes now and then. Sometimes you just make the wrong call and that can happen to anyone. There are people who never learn, but since I don't know the driver, I try to assume the best and that they didn't mean any harm. I'm sitting in a little cafe right now because I still have two hours to wait until loading starts. The truck is parked out back at an ENBW charging station that only delivers 80 kilowatts. Does it make sense to charge here? Not really. Do I think it's cool anyway? Absolutely. I got loaded at a warehouse specialized in hazardous materials. I'm carrying flammable liquids in barrels, and you can actually enter that info into the navigation system because there are route restrictions, especially for tunnels. I never noticed before, but there are letters posted before tunnels, and those letters indicate what kind of hazardous materials are allowed through. Right now, I have tunnel restriction code E. It's nothing super unusual, but you can enter it into the GPS and it will automatically route you around tunnels where E is not allowed. And I've got good news. I got a haircut. <laughs> but more importantly, the winter phase is officially over. A lot of people said winter would be hard or impossible for electric trucks. And in every video over the past weeks, I've proven that while it can be challenging, it works. A lot of people also still claim that charging time counts as working time, but I've just put on my running shoes and I'm heading out for a jog. So, to everyone who believes that's work time, try telling your boss tomorrow during working hours that you're going for a jog. Let me know how that goes. <laughs> I've arrived back at our depot, and in two hours I'll get a different trailer, attach the electric forklift, and drive to Fenlo.
I still have three minutes of driving time left for my 10 hour shift and I've driven 756 kilometers today. That's close to the limit of what's possible for any trucker. That's an average of almost 76 kilometers per hour over the entire driving time. And here's an FH electric that's incredibly long. It doesn't fit on a regular parking spot. It has a trailer at the back and then another tandem axle at the rear. And I'm perfectly timed to the minute. Jackpot. It's already getting dark again because I've been waiting here for 10 hours. I was here just before 8, and now it's 6 and they're closing right after me. Something went wrong with the scheduling, but that's how it sometimes is in logistics. But now I have to hurry because tomorrow morning I have to deliver the goods and drive back to Lear with new cargo. The charging park I used last night also has some issues. I just met another e-trucker that drives a Mercedes e-Actros 600. He charges here regularly, and the charging stations only provide 160 kilowatts or are partially broken. And that's really crazy. You have a truck that can charge at 400 kilowatts, but you can't get more than 160. He's already escalated it at Aral, but nothing is happening. The infrastructure at his depot is not finished and he has to charge here, which costs him at least an extra hour every day. So that's definitely something to note for every logistics provider. If you can build a depot with charging points, you should do it to avoid situations like this. But this really shouldn't happen in the first place. Aral should be on top of it. And of course it affects the driver's mood when you're just standing around for hours. It wasn't a problem for me because I charged overnight, but I wouldn't want to trade places. I'm done with unloading at the garden center. Everything went well, although I had to drive back and forth a bit. The client, Lucas, wanted to make this transport electric. Just like my first transport this week, he chose a company that offers electric transport. And I walked around a bit and there's so much to see. We're here at our garden center and from here we drive to all the cemeteries in Frankfurt with this vehicle from Evo Motors. It's a German manufacturer from Munich. It has a 17 kilowatt hour battery and we use it for all kinds of cemetery work because it can also load and tow a lot. It has all wheel drive and a towing capacity of 1.5 tons. And here's my private electric car, a Sangyong Ecorando with 56 kilowatt hours and it can also tow 1.5 tons as a backup. And next to it is a solar carport with 4.8 kilowatt peak. It has 12 modules with 420 watts each. And in this small box, there is the inverter, battery and wall box. The lead gel battery has 30 kilowatt hours and I bought this as a complete package for 11,500 euros. We also have two electric Maxxis e-delivery nines. We've been driving completely electric with them on the cemeteries since 2014. They have 48 volt technology with lead acid batteries. Thank you so much for the insights. It's really exciting that even smaller businesses can go electric if they want to. The week is over and I'm impressed with how well everything worked. I drove 3000 kilometers this week and as you saw, if loading would have been more efficient, I could have driven even more. It just shows how far we've come with electric long distance transport. Next week I'm heading to Austria and Krimalix will join me again. I'll see you then. Ciao.